So I'm going to present the speaker. Uh, so it's my great pleasure and honor to present uh, uh, Jaroslav Neshetschil, uh, who will be speaking at the colloquium today. Um, uh, Jarek is a professor at uh, Charles University in Prague. He is also a, an elected member of Academia Europeana. Uh, he works in discrete mathematics, logic, applied mathematics, and many different fields. Uh, he has been um, he has been an author of uh, more than 300 papers and um, and uh, been invited to the ICM twice, uh, spoken uh, different fields. Uh, he is uh, also uh, uh, he has also an uncountable number of students and descendants, some of whom occupy positions here in Montreal. And it's uh, a great pleasure to listen to him. He will be talking about Ramsey theory, sparsity and limits, uh, combinatorics and model theory. Thank you very much, Marcin. It's a great pleasure to be, to be here. Thank you for the invitation. In fact, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's my not, not the first time in, in Montreal. In fact, my uh, doctoral supervisor was one of the first uh, directors of CRM, it was Gerd Savidusi, who passed away last year. And uh, so I visited him here. I mean, I started under him with, uh, in Montreal, but then yeah, in, a, in a Hamilton with my master, and I visited him here. So, uh, but that was not the only time. <laughs> in fact, I, I think this is, if this is a lecture for the CRM, uh, then I, I was invited, I gave an invited lecture at PIMS and I gave an invited lecture at the Fields Institute. So maybe this is the site completing the, uh, completing the list. Uh, so I was asked to give a lecture, which is uh, somehow broader oriented. I mean, so it's uh, certainly not uh, for a combinatoric seminar or for, it's a, uh, but uh, what I want to speak about is, as the title indicates, is, uh, is somehow the various connection which somehow classical, uh, uh, classical uh, combinatorial disciplines or areas had uh, more recently and particularly to the model theory and, and, the, and the logic as the title, as subtitle says. So uh, I usually, I usually start the lecture by showing you that the, the Montreal is the, not the only nice place on the earth. You know, this is a picture of our department in Prague. If you ever come to Prague, this is my window over here. <laughs> and <clears throat> so uh, somehow the, uh, in the first slides is sort of like a leitmotiv of the, of the lecture. Who would think some 30 years ago, that uh, somehow structural graph theory would uh, it will move towards uh, stability theory in the, in the say, Schellach sense. We would think of it that uh, Ramsey theory would move to, to the topological dynamics or uh, parts of model theory too. Who, be, who would think that the complexity of, algo, of colorings would find setting in universal algebra Actually, in this connection, I want to mention that uh, this one of the early works on it was uh, provided a professor from here, uh, Ivo Rosenberg, I mean, who came actually with this connection to clones and the complexity. Yeah. Who would think of it uh, 30 years ago that, uh, that a study of finite properties uh, will lead to study of limits or some structural limits or that? graph limits, and there are other instances of it. And I think it, this is a good, good to stress this point because it is certainly, there is a certain uh, development or certain trend uh, going on and uh, which uh, some people, including myself, are thinking it's, a, it's important, maybe shift it. So I want to say just a few glimpses of this development. I will speak in the first part. It will be approximately in one third of it about uh, some Ramsey questions. I will speak about the uh, uh, sparsity, which uh, which can be known to a structural graph theory. I will at the end uh, speaks 
on the limits. In a way, this is sort of, uh, as well reflecting chronologically, slightly chronological uh, development. <clears throat> so here is a finite Ramsey theorem. Look at that, you see it. I mean, uh, which says, which I think most of you know, or everybody knows, uh, but, uh, if you take the natural numbers, then there is some big number, uh, I don't know, by capital N, uh, depending on these three parameters, such, such that uh, this uh, there is a brief uh, uh, or uh, abbreviation of the statement, which is here written below, below. So if the set is sufficiently big, if you take any set which is sufficiently big, and you you take a partition of all p element subsets of the of the set, you uh, or coloring, you color it by k colors, so you split it into k classes, and then the and the important thing you do it just say in uh, in. Uh, 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 way there was some underlying structure on X. It's just a part less of potential uh, potential information on the surface. And nevertheless, no matter how you do it, you, somebody will win or you will win because there will exist a set which is which has a given site. This is a small n, such that all its p elements subset of this subset are in one class of the partition, are monochromatic. This is usually denoted by, by this arrow, capital N arrows, small n. It is not a very logical arrow, but it is established arrow. When we were a young mathematician, we tried to reverse the arrow, which would be more, more, more logical. And it created a international furore. So, so, so we stick to, to this, uh, to this uh, as well. We gave up. <laughs> now, uh, this is uh, this is really the theorem in many respects uh, surprising, and uh, among particular people which are not going not in a combinatorial, one should stress it again and again. It's uh, full of somehow miracles. You know, one of the miracles is that uh, it instantly leads to problems, right? So it uh, it's uh, there is basically only one case which is which is. Uh, uh, which is well solved or which is fully understood, and that's a pigeonhole principle. Yeah, and if you if you start to to color or partition the pairs or edges, uh, the, so p is equal to two, then you have just handful, not handful, just two examples where, where which are which are solved. And uh, if you take the, the, if you are looking for a monochromatic set of size five. Uh, then it is somewhere around 45. And uh, the nature of the theorem is not making it possible that even by some brute force on the computer that it would be solved. I mean, despite of that, it is well-known problem. It's not exotic problem, which nobody would investigate. That's not true. I mean, it's a problem for 50 years or almost 100 years, uh, uh, which is uh, studied and uh, which people try. And if you improve some bounds, you get uh, you get your paper in Annals of Mathematics, you know, as happened uh, to David Conlon a few years a few a few years ago. Yeah, so it's a it's 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 a strange phenomenon that you instantly hit uh, hit the wall. I mean, so, uh, and this is of course uh, used in in modern theoretical computer science, it's used in cryptography as one of the one of the principles. Uh, I mean, the existence of uh, large graphs which uh, don't have those. Uh, one of now, so so it's a uh, it's a uh, if you look at the, at the I don't know if you in internet for example that uh, the majority of the questions which are related to Ramsey theorem are extreme problems of this type uh, they are uh, asking how big are these things and this is as well traditional uh, way of uh, looking at it and uh, and but there is another uh, thing uh, this is that uh, Ramsey theorem is kind of uh, principle yeah it's a theorem which uh, has no assumptions I mean it speaks about sets about partitions, you know, there is no, no axiom. You're still claiming that there is some regularity. Uh, some You will find some very highly regular uh, piece, no matter what somebody else as will do. And so this is, of course, even how the uh, pigeonhole principle 
is, uh, is used. And people always had a feeling that the pigeonhole principle is a kind of a, a special thing. And whenever it appears in some complicated uh, proof, you, you became aware because there is a certain touch of, uh, touch of uh, 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 not uh, constructibility, uh, constructibility. And, and that is as well studied by people uh, from, uh, from uh, co com in the complexity uh, context. And so they, uh, it's, you can see it as a principle, and then you can ask, are there any other principles like, like the Ramsey theorem? Unfortunately, they are, right? And, uh, and they are associated to, to well-known theorems of well-known people, I mean, so it's the theorem of van der Waarden who, who speaks on arithmetical progressions in, a, in a natural numbers. Instead of finding a set in one class of partition, we will find a large set uh, of, uh, of uh, natural numbers which form arithmetical progressions. Uh, there is a short theorem which is claiming that uh, whenever you split uh, natural numbers, you will get uh, two elements and their sum, x, y, and x plus y. Right? It's a somehow, uh, somehow not automatic, right? So, I mean, this is uh, against nature in a sense. I mean, if you look at it, the nature is, I mean, if you, if you color x and y, the chi plus one differently, you know, but it will not work because, uh, because if, the, if the set is little larger. Not many people know that, I mean, the first theorem of this was proved by David Hilbert. I mean, in his famous uh, paper from, 92, 18, 1892, uh, he about the irreducibility of uh, of uh, of uh, integer polynomials. Um, he's uh, having a lemma, which is which we now uh, call a cube lemma, uh, which is basically saying that if you split subsets, then you will uh, on very large set into fixed number of parts, say in two parts, then you will find uh, n disjoint sets. And one more, so that uh, all the all the sets uh, say a zero and a y not to a n, such that all sets of the form a zero and then plus some subset of these n elements set, they are all lying in the same kind of partition. So this is uh, this he proved uh, proved in, in that paper. I look at that paper and people did something called temporary, so the proof is that we are doing by induction on this, uh, on this uh, small, small n. And then of course there is uh, uh, this, uh, this area uh, got uh, a lot of boost by, by, the, by the result of yeah. and uh, George Sekeresh from 35 and they rediscovered uh, Ramsey theorem and uh, apply it to the geometry about the, that in any, uh, any uh, any set in the plane, uh, you will either find a long line or you will find a, a set which is uh, uh, which is forming a convex uh, a convex angle. It's a verticeous a convex a convex set. Yeah. So I mean, these sets, this uh, theorem certainly contributed to that it is not isolated phenomenon. They all have a certain certain thing in common, and that. But uh, that was isolated much much later. I mean, and so uh, it led to the notion at the beginning of seventies, the notion of Ramsey class of structures. I mean, so think of structures, uh, structures of any type. I mean, I mean it can be numbers, it can be points in geometry, it can be <clears throat> it can be graphs, it can be uh, sets. So I mean, they say that the class of structure is, is Ramsey. If you take any two elements in the in the class and you fix a number of colors, then there exists another object which is typically C, which is typically much larger, very big. I mean, but you don't care. I mean, uh, but this uh, this area is uh, mostly dealing with uh, uh, with finite objects and with some classes, with infinite classes consisting from a finite object. So, <clears throat> but, so, the, so if you fix any two classes and you fix the number of colors, there exists class C, such that the C arrows uh, in the similar sense as before, I rotate here explicitly. <clears throat> so if you take a C to C A, this is all sub objects which are isomorphic of C, which are isomorphic to A, 
all edges in the com in the graph C, all uh, 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 all uh, say p element uh, p dimensional subspaces of a vector space or something like it. So if you split all subobjects of A which are isomorphic of C which are isomorphic to A and you split it in any way. In, a, in, a co in combinatorial way or in set way into K classes, if you color it by K colors, then there exists, uh, there exists uh, B prime. The B was uh, B given before. So B prime is isomorphic to B and it's sitting, it's living in the C and there exists one class of the partition I zero, such that all the, all the subobjects of the B prime are, are lying in one class of the partition. Yeah. yeah, and the examples of Ramsey Ramsey classes are not too many, and they were developing sort of slowly. I mean, they were developing in the in the in the sixties and seventies. I mean, so and some of people were happy whenever they found one. I mean, so they are these. Hell-Jewett cubes, which are known as parameter set due to Graham and Rothschild. There's a dual Ramsey theorem, which was isolated 10 years later, which maybe which we now view as a, as a particle example of parameter set, but which was isolated uh, independently. And that formulation was, uh, uh, was, uh, uh, was established uh, later, say 10 years later. Yeah. Vector spaces, <laughs> so finite dimensional vector spaces over fixed uh, finite field. Uh, and, uh, and then there are others, I mean, for example, uh, Doeber's MPC set, which, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, generalizing van der Waarden theorem and, 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 and the, the Schutt theorem. So it's, uh, I mean, if you take van der Waarden theorem, for example, van der theorem is not Ramsey class because it, it deals that if you if you split the natural numbers, you get something, but you get you split uh, individual singletons. You sp split natural numbers. The theorem is not true, as it's easy to see by some divisibility or uh, by, by even by some structural argument. It's not true for uh, for partition of pairs. If you you can split partition of uh, you can split. Uh, uh, pairs of natural numbers in two classes, and uh, and you will not get arithmetic longer arithmetic progression. Yeah, and I mean, so I mean, these very sort of like isolated, uh, isolated classes which have uh, same definition, and uh, it was nice, but uh, they somehow they didn't somehow uh, uh, they use uh, different techniques, and. Uh, so it was only natural to, to try that one can, uh, one can uh, uh, somehow make it uniform. This is still uh, not, uh, not the case. I mean, there are some general theorems, but I mean, there is, uh, uh, and people try it from various, uh, various areas. They try it from category theory, and they try to do it in some, uh, say, structural, structural way. And, uh, but uh, there is, this is not the area when you would have a unified, Unified uh, theory or unified uh, way of uh, you have a unified way of looking at it, but you have a different proof techniques. I mean, and but uh, if you take, for example, graphs, <laughs> then what are the Ramsey class of graphs? Well, if you are all complete graphs, <laughs> so this is a uh, this is another version of uh, Ramsey theorem. <laughs> You have all ordered graphs, graphs which have a given ordering. You have uh, uh, graphs which are all of them but don't contain a certain complete graph. For example, all triangle-free graphs, graphs which don't contain triangle. Yeah, the ordered triangle-free graphs, ordered KK-free graphs. I mean, the definition is somehow speaking, if you are taking induced subgraphs or embeddings, it's uh, irrelevant that you speak of the graph or the complement graph, you could speak about non-edges, so classes of the complementary graphs. And these were uh, basically, basically all of them, yeah, uh, known, known, yeah. You need this ordering there, so this is, uh, you sort of need it 
it's a uh, uh, it goes it's uh, it's involved in the in the in a, it's uh, involved in the technique of the proof and it's necessary to have it there if it is unordered it does, it's not true right so i mean i i will put something on the on the blackboard so for example if you take a simple example you take um, i put back the this slide and this uh, so if you put a uh, a you can put put uh, pass of length two like, like a cherry yeah. and take b you take uh, say pentagon and it will be under mm -hmm. a claim that there is no c which would arrow b the cherry and two right it's unordered. Yeah. If it is ordered, if I give it, if it will be one, two, three, and if it will be one, two, three, four, if it will be ordered in some way, then it is true. But even if it is unordered, it's not true. And why it is true? Just to get a, to get a feeling so that I, 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 I show them why it is. <clears throat> so take a, such a C by contradiction, right? Suppose that there is a C of, the, of this. So I'm claiming this, right? So uh, suppose there is a C, so I order it arbitrarily, and now look at the A. A is a pass of length two, so it's either sitting there as a in a monotone way, yeah, or it's a sitting there in a non-monotone way. For example, this way, right? But there is no, one. yeah, or it's sitting there in conversely. I mean, there is a maximal, yeah. So all of them, are, and so you can color it, for example, the just taking this color one and it will be color two, yeah. or one, two, and, and you don't care about the rest. And there is a, no, no pentagon, no pentagon, so that you would be of the same type. Because if you take ordering of arbitrary pentagon, well, this, this pentagon has to have some minimal element so you will have this, right? Blah, blah. And you will continue it. And it has, uh, the Pentagon has chromatic number three. So you will have as well this uh, there. Yeah? You cannot have a Pentagon, which would be just going this way, right? The, that would be a chromatic. That's why, why I put this. It's even easier to color this one, well, one and this one too. Yeah, because you will have to minimal and you have to have a maximum. Yeah. So there is no no pentagon which would be which would be fine. But if it is ordered, so it means I mean basically it means that you get a pentagon, some ordered pentagon. This all these will be of one color. These will be of one color, and these will be of one color. Yeah, so <clears throat> so you need some ordering, and uh, and this uh, ordering uh, was actually instrumental understanding. It was instrumental in this, and in fact you can prove that there are no other. That they be simply this list, which was discovered earlier, it was discovered in the in the mid seventies, that there are no other uh, Ramsey classes. So why why is that true? And well, it's uh, going from some uh, not too difficult observation, but is involving a quite complicated theorem. Yeah, which I have. So you observe that. With today language, you observe it. It took some time to find it. That every Ramsey graph has so-called amalgamation, which is uh, known in model theory. If you have a two structures and they have a common part, then are, you can somehow paste them together, right? But you can paste them together in some in some complicated way, right? So, so you may have you it's, uh, speaking about categorically about this diagram, right? B one, B two. And so there is a completion. There is something here, something here, so that the diagram commutes. If that is possible, you speak about amalgamation. What it means here is A, and it is A is sitting in B1, and A is sitting in, in, the, in the B2. So you can stick it together. Yeah. But what does it mean to stick it together? Well, you may stick it together, for example, in this way, this is what you think is. Uh, amalgamation but you may stick it as well to get together that that there will be bigger overlap right 
And maybe it will be, it will be possible that they are the same. For example, if you take a one triangle and another triangle, so what will be the amalgamation of it? For example, one triangle again, right? So that's a, and you don't know which one, which of the cases will, will happen. This is, this is making it, a, you know, only that, you know that it can be completed, but you don't know how. I mean, so that's a complication. And, uh, and then there is a Fraser theory, which is coming from the model theory. It's not, not the difficult, but it's a profound observation. You to uh, Fraser that, uh, that, uh, that if you have amalgamation, then it's a, then there exists one countable structure, which has all the similarities, which is for the homogeneity, the homogeneity part. That is the isomorphism of the whole thing. Can live with the right automorphism of the, of the whole graph. That goes by some zigzag, uh, some argument, not, not, not too difficult. And this observation is actually critical because this ultra homogeneous structure, there are not too many. Imagine this is a, this, this ultra homogeneous structure is something what you could consider is a good place to live in, right? So, I mean, you, if you are in a, in ultra homogeneous structure, then all the points are the same. All the edges are the same. All the finite structures are the same. So all the, all the airports are the same all the world. You know? So that's a, that's a, that's a way, way to, way to look at it. And ultra homogeneous structures of the of graphs are characterized, and that's a famous theorem by Lachlan and Woodrow from the from the seventies. And by chance, they are few, yeah, and they are basically those which are, which were on the previous slide. There are so some there are some other ones. There are some other ones. For example, there are finite ones. Just a second. Uh, there, were, there are finite ones. <laughs> there, there are some. Uh, complete, uh, complete multipartite graphs, you know, but they easily you are ruled out that they are not Ramsey. Please, so what's the question? Right? They, I mean, the graphs with a free ordering. Good question. I mean, this, uh, these are graphs where I take arbitrary ordering. I mean, so, yeah. If you take class of order graphs, for that you need a characterization of ultra homogeneous class of ordered graphs, and even uh, that is by now no true. There was uh, was proved by Charlie a few years ago. So it's a more difficult result than, than, than this one. Yeah. So, I mean, that is, we, know, uh, we know all in a certain sense, and that was somehow this inspired, inspired, uh, inspired uh, a lot of research, trying to characterize of the things which somehow seem to be uh, complicated to, uh, at the first glance. And, uh, and in fact, the situation gets, uh, Sort of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, and it uh, was uh, okay. Still say it. This uh, and uh, they was uh, studied not only for combinatorial, so but it was studied as well for uh, for uh, some more enriched classic, for example, for metric spaces or for uh, labeled graphs with metric labelings. And it was uh, very fine results, for example, for two graphs. I mean, uh, and here are some theorems which, uh, uh, which uh, we, we somehow were uh, then working on, and uh, somehow the most uh, somehow uh, um, uh, comprehensive uh, comprehensive paper is this at the bottom with uh, Jan Hubička, was my student at that time still, and uh, he. And he uh, he will lecture on Tuesday at the at the at the at your seminar, right? So at the discrete math center. At the discrete. Yeah. And I want to send to always end with some problem. I sort of ending this Ramsey um, Ramsey questions and uh, uh, so so in fact you just reverse the pro. It seems that there is a more examples and it's a whole whole the theory of these Ramsey classes much richer than, than it looked at the beginning. Maybe they are abundant, they are everywhere, right? So there was a question, if every ultra homogeneous structure, M, has an expansion, so if you are adding something to it, 
I mean, you are adding the ordering and you are adding labeling of vertices. So for example, if you consider bipartite graphs, they are not Ramsey, but because they have two parts, if you put labels on the, on the, on the, on the parts, if you take the monadic expansion of it, then, then the, the class became Ramsey. Yeah. So uh, is there is always for ultra homogeneous expansion, which is a finite, uh, such that uh, this uh, all the finite substructure of this expansion form a Ramsey class. You need finite or somehow well behaved because if you if you just say infinite that uh, of course it is this accountable structure so you may cover everything differently or you get Ramsey class right so you you want to somehow uh, in essence is you want to have it finite there is expansion. Uh, uh, so you are asking by this expansion, I mean finite expansion, say that the HSM. Let me just disprove it. I mean, this uh, David Evans, uh, that it's not true. I mean, that uh, they, they are they are ultra homogeneous structure which don't have finite Ramsey expansion. It's just uh, uh, a few years ago. Yeah. But what remains, it's open question if it, there is holes for of the finite language. So if you have a if you have a structure where the objects are of uh, characterized by finitely many data, so if the language of the language of the structure is uh, finite, then this actually doesn't work. It's uh, it's uh, our contra example doesn't work. It's based on somehow semi-metric labeling uh, and Hrushovsky amalgamation. Uh, peculiar amalgamation uh, construction. And uh, uh, so this is open question, uh, whether, whether it's a good problem or not. It is, I would still think that answer should be negative, but I don't know. Um, any, any questions to Ramsey? I mean, before I give another example, um, or contra examples. But where did you get this test of Kedorkovich? Like you mentioned it, but I didn't understand it relating to the one. The Kekropist of Todorcevich, I'm mentioning it uh, over here, right? Uh, I mean, they then they they start, I I said sort of like a beginning. I suppose Peg said that it is related to ultra homogeneous structure, and now you take a group of automorphism and group of automorphism of this. Uh, it uh, it's a uh, view proof if it is Ramsey that is extremely amenable. In fact, this is a characterization. Yeah, so it's a structural characterization. They have a structural characterization of uh, of uh, what it is uh, to prove extreme amenability. In, basically, in all cases, you need to go back to Ramsey. So, yeah, so. But what I'm saying is that yeah. it's not about this class. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, the year is correct. I said. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I still have something. Yeah, I mean Ramsey is a I bit mean, is a celebrity by now, right? So they say uh, yeah, there was some anniversary that uh, he, he, there was uh, this is a New Yorker, and in fact there are two books about him recently published. I mean, one of them is published by I think this uh, Cheryl Misaki is uh, some vice president in Toronto, U of T, and, and uh, say she's philosopher. I mean. Pragmatism and uh, and uh, Margaret Paul is a sister of uh, of uh, Ramsey. He died very young. I mean, he died when he was twenty six. So his his sister was living. I mean, until ninety, <laughs> nineteen ninety, and uh, uh, but she was much younger than than he. And she wrote a very charming book. Actually, I like that book very much. I mean, so and what is interesting, maybe. Even this open problem, maybe we should write a book. Somebody should write a book, mathematician, because all these people are neglecting mathematics. He was his somehow connection to philosophy and economy and uh, and uh, probability. Or say it, it's a particular philosophy is so strong that uh, or people who write books are somehow uh, familiar with those. And the mathematics is usually not there. If it is there, it's full of mistakes, you know. So, there, so for example, in this Musak, I just I just page through it and I find I found two mistakes, you know. So that's so that's but it's a, but anyway, it's a really marginally marginally that uh, that uh, mathematicians are always elsewhere claiming that he was an important person. This is how they, how they write the books. <laughs> 
So I want to speak about the structure gap, okay, and say, and say something about the sparsity. Yeah. So, I mean, sparsity is a, is a, is a, is a general mathematical phenomenon, right? So it's all fees, particularly in applied mathematics. I mean, there's a hope that if something is sparse, then they, there is an effective algorithm. Very nice uh, lecture and uh, writing has Emmanuel Gantes on the, on, the, on the sparsity. He speaks about mathematics of, of sparsity. And uh, it's a provoked, of course, by algorithm. I have an example for you just to give you, yes. <clears throat> simple, simple question, okay, motivating question, but even that question is uh, interesting. So uh, how to find the triangle in the, in the in, in a graph, yeah? you get a graph, graph has n vertices, and you want to find a track, right? And, uh, or you want to find a KK, it can be more simple, right? Well, if it has n points, so you, you take all the triples and, uh, and you, for each triple in, uh, in linear number of points, in linear in terms of the, how the graph was given, you will find uh, whether there are three edges or not there, or they or choose two edges or not. So, so it's a polynomial, exactly, but it's a uh, cube. Can you do it better? Can you do it more, more better? Surprisingly, yes. Yeah. So it's related to, if you've ever seen it, then it's related to fast matrix multiplication. Right? So if you, if you can multiply matrices faster than Gauss, you know, faster than n cube steps, then uh, what you can do, for example, for the triangle, you take the incidence matrix of the graph and you, you multiply it with itself. So that sort of counting, counting passes of length two, uh, including degenerated walks of like this. So in diagonal, you get a non zero, non zero. And then you put on it your, your uh, original matrix, and if there is uh, somewhere uh, non-zero at, uh, at the same place, there is a triangle. If not, there is no triangle. Right? So it's uh, into the, into the uh, number omega. And if you do it for uh, with some little trick, you do it for uh, for k tuples, for k, k, k complete graphs. Then then you get then you may get uh, reducing it to the triangle, you may get uh, n to the omega is this fast matrix multiplication exponent, the infimum of all the, all the exponents for, uh, for, uh, for uh, all the, uh, for the complexity of uh, the algorithm for individual matrices. And uh, uh, so it's, uh, uh, you get n to the omega uh, divided by three times k. So it's essentially small, right? Because the uh, the uh, the omega is by now it's uh, investigated heavily. This is a cradle cradle of the of the fine uh, fine complexity. I mean, uh, fine grain complexity, so called. It's a whole whole area of theoretical computer science. Uh, it's called uh, fine grain simplicity, which is quite active right now. <clears throat> so, so the so the exponent is something like two comma three seven. I was amused that uh, that actually this is improving on this last digit on the fifth digit uh, after 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 a comma. It's improving by one uh, François Legal proof. Uh, François Legal had a proof uh, which is having seven. At the, at the, at the end, so, yeah, this is the best. The another thing which is strange in a way that this random is but it is really an open problem for 20 years I mean, that, uh, to improve this uh, exponent for a K creek. Uh, <laughs> And it was studied. There are papers, in fact, in the, which are showing why it, why it is difficult to improve this. Yeah. <clears throat> but on the other hand side, on the other hand side, if you pass to, to the sparse graphs, this is for general graphs, right? So, uh, but if you pass to sparse graphs, I mean, the, or the graph, special graphs, for example, for planar, planar graphs, then you get a linear algorithm. Yeah. And, uh, that basically boils down to the question that if you take a planar graph, 
then by you have Euler formula, I mean, about the number of vertices and edges there. And uh, so there has to be degree five there. And uh, so somehow, if you are able to beg, begin with the degree five in the neighborhoods, there are only five vertices. So, I mean, this is, uh, this is not, uh, not, uh, uh, not uh, then difficult to come with uh, linear, time, uh, linear time algorithm. And it holds even for graphs on surfaces. I mean, uh, I mean the play and, and so on. It holds for graphs which have a bounded degree. So it's a, it's always this uh, linear, 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 linear algorithm. So how to define the sparsity? What about the sparse uh, sparse uh, uh, can be? Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I probably I left an uh, empty page just indicated that this is topic. Spar it's about sparsity, right? Yeah. <laughs> really? Maybe I hope that it's there are still something after. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, it uh, and it leads to the following definition, which somehow looks at the first time a little bit crazy. Uh, and even if you are combinatorist and you somehow think this is somehow too too special <laughs> of it and but then uh, when you study it and how it develops you see that it is very very somehow natural and there are many different uh, different formulations so you say that a class of graphs to be sparse it's always property of a class, right? I mean, it doesn't make a sense that the Pentagon is a sparse graph. What does he mean? I mean, so because he's a five edges, so if he'd have a six, it would be not sparse. I mean, so it's always property of the, it's always property of the property, property of the class, right? So you say that the class of us is an overdance. Yeah. If, if you take, um, if you look at this, a picture I should show you. Uh, if you if you take uh, if you are looking for subgraphs which have the oh, at most uh, d at most d points on a, on an edge. So if you are looking for subgraphs like this, they, where these are three points and, and they, uh, maybe there are only two points here. And so on every edge uh, there are only bounded number of points. Uh, that uh, then there is uh, for every d. There exists some n, so that is this uh, picture like it will not be in any 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 graph in the class. Right? So if I take uh, three points, so if I take four points for this is your state, I take four points and I say d is three. Yeah. <laughs> no, if I take d equal to three, then there will be there will be bound. They will be saying me that picture like it with with uh, twenty five points will not be will be not found in my class uh, in my any any graph in the class as a as a subgraph. Uh, so k k d and d is means it's a complete graph of size and d where every edge on every edge is a sitting at most at most d points um, and so. So uh, it's if the, if you have a graph which is planar, then you will not find k five there, right? But I mean it's a, but in fact you will not find there any uh, any subdivision of the of the of the of the of the complete graph because this uh, this these extra points are somehow not changing the planarity, right? But of course that may change in the in the in the other classes. For example, take a take a class of graphs which have uh, all degrees three. Yeah. <clears throat> all the, so if the all degrees are three, you may find the K4, we may tie four points and all the edges in between because those degrees are three. You will not find, uh, you will not, uh, you, you will not find uh, to a higher, uh, 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 you will not, uh, you will, you will not find uh, uh, K five there because it's a uh, but if you take this small tours then you may find a longer longer long, 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 longer graph in fact you make the, find a K five you cannot you, you cannot find a K six there and so for any 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 D there it should be N D uh, so that this complete graph will be 
uh, subdivided few times will not be present there. I am saying that. And uh, so this uh, sort of complicated definition led to the notion of nowhere dense. If something is, uh, is uh, if something is, uh, 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 something is not nowhere dense, if the, this property does hold, it's called somewhere dense. That's a definition which is about, I don't know, 15 years, 15 year old. It's a really subject of a lot of, a lot, a lot of research to speak about the, uh, this uh, speaks about this uh, subdivision of the few points or uh, that a contraction of the uh, small uh, small neighborhoods is leading uh, to the shallow minor, uh, to the notion of a shallow minor, which was studied by computer scientists, or these computer scientists even, even, even before. And so the definition can be said that uh, G does not contain for large N this, uh, it's a shallow topological minor with a complete graph at the, at the depths of, of D. Yeah, and it is leading. Oh, here I indicated this uh, about this six regular uh, about this uh, cubic cubic graphs. What I said, what I said um, uh, uh, just a minute ago. I mean, and you can as well define something. What's a bounded the, the expansion, uh, which is final. So that for every D, then the class of all these shadow miners, so larger and larger class, uh, it's uh, degenerated. So it means in, not that the degrees are bound, but it can be ordered in such a way that the degrees, degrees are bound. Now, I, I don't have to uh, say this in more detail uh, because uh, it looks somehow fancy, but uh, or special, but in fact, it is not. There are other definitions which I mean of it which uh, which gives exactly the, this uh, the uh, the same same uh, same thing Don't forget that. we wrote a book about it and that's right. that's it so and this uh, what is related to it these are all kinds of all these blobs are various uh, different uh, difference way uh, to to look at it I mean so it may be it's related to discrepancy it's like uh, to pecking it's actually any any combinatorial parameter which you can think of say independence number is a, or creek number leads to a definition of 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 the of these classes for example I mean it, it can be characterized by means of uh, coloring <clears throat> yeah so you take uh, maybe I just put it on the <clears throat> key is a chromatic number of the of the graph, so it's uh, like in five color theorem. What if he p is he p is a variant of it? There is always some parameter there. I mean, this p or d. I mean, so he p is uh, is a, if he p is smaller than something, uh, if there is a partition of your graph into, into classes, which have a property that if you take, it's a coloring, and there are no edges here. And if you take any P classes or P prime smaller than P, then what you see on it will be very simple. Yeah. And what you will see in will, will be, so the G restricted to this union of color classes over some I, where i is uh, of size at most p, <coughs> or p prime, so the, the three depths of this thing will be at most uh, at most p prime. And three depths is a natural parameter which is somehow saying what is the depth of the tree which enclosure contains our uh, graph. It's a it's a it shouldn't be confused with three bits if if you know what three bits is. But what does it mean, for example, for p equal to two? Yeah. For p equal to one, it means that they are independent. And for e equal to means that they are, or between any, there are only stars. Because this one, this, this one doesn't have a three, three depths, uh, three depths, uh, three depths, uh, uh, three depths two. So, and if you, and if you, for, uh, for p equal to three, this is like piecing of triangles and the subgraphs of it. And so it's somehow a very strong definition. And alternatively, what I said before, I mean, 
this he p this uh, class has a bounded expansion if this for every p is bounded on the graph and if something is nowhere dense if it is almost bounded if it if it's almost linear linear uh, linear size of of this uh, of this heap and here is a, a definition of the of the of the of the what's sometimes called quasi white uh, property this means of alpha i mean if you take a if you take a sparse graph what you can what you would should rightly uh, expect that there will be many points which are somehow not not joined together which are independent and so there is a large independent set yeah. that's of course not classifying the, these uh, the, these graphs you have to refine it you have to put some some p so p will be the distance so you somehow is it true that if the class if the graph is sparse then there is uh, it's huge is it really true that you can find always many points which are far away any two are a distance at least p yeah could that be true the answer is no right why because of the stars right if you take a if you take a star which is infinite which is as big as you want now a p will be equal to two so i mean you have, of course it contains many points which are not joined but they are all a distance too right but what in this case happened if you delete one point it happens and that's exactly the phenomenon right and something is quasi wide if for every p you can delete a few points depending on the p cp uh, such that the theorem of c is some equivalent to, to this definition so it's not just uh, that they are uh, similar but uh, they are simply giving the same class which is actually not not easy to see so if if the class is monotone closed on subgraphs then it then the following statements are equivalent this is my sign which i like for the following statements are equivalent c is nowhere dense and c satisfy this property for every p that the chromatic the p chromatic number is almost linear and C is quasi white, uh, which is uh, which was in this. But this is not all. So, I mean, it can be, as a, for example, proved that uh, the something is to say, say the characterization extends uh, really uh, some 10, uh, 10 uh, maybe 15 characterization, and each of this is different. For example, one of them is using, uh, using uh, complexity of algorithm. So, C has almost linear model checking so called model checking algorithm model checking problem is that given formula you are asking given formula fixed formula does that a, how to find whether the given graph satisfies that formula or not and so uh, for the free variables for example whether there are some uh, uh, replacement uh, for free free variables by 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 vertices of the graph so that the formula holds I mean, these problems subgraph problem they are of this type right so detecting triangle in the graph this is uh, asking whether certain formula <coughs> no. so the this model checking for phi uh, is uh, on these no variance classes is uh, is uh, is almost linear uh, and this is in fact equivalent if the class is monotone, it's equivalent with, with, the, with the definition. And that's not all. I mean, it was uh, and recently shown, and that's why I am saying here that it's not a just phenomenon of the of the of the combinatorics. It's a phenomenon which fits to uh, to model theory context. I mean, so if the if the, they say this uh, Shellach. Uh, stability and dependence of NIP uh, uh, classification of the of the of the theories, and it's basically all infinite. But if you if you uh, transform it to the to the to the countable uh, structures and the finite structures and the infinite countable structures of them, then you get equivalence again. So that's uh, if for if class is monotone then another class of uh, uh, graphs i mean i should say graphs in these here uh, and uh, uh, 
because I didn't spoke about the structures. I mean, and the sea is nowhere dense, if and only if it is stable in 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 shellac sense, and if and only if it is uh, if it is nape class or it a dependent class. And that was actually anticipating that that was proved by in early works on, on the development of this uh, stability theory uh, by Podevsky and Ziegler in very different language. And, uh, and uh, that it was then observed by Adler and Adler that, uh, that it fits uh, exactly to, to it. And the quantification of this was, was done recently for the number of types was, uh, was done uh, uh, by Philip Chuk. Uh, Sebastian Sieberts and Shimon Torunchik. Yeah. And so, very nice, particularly this last paper is. It's an interesting class of monoton cartographs, NIP is equivalent to the. Uh, say it again. For, for monoton cartographs, yes. specifically NIP and stability are the same. Yeah. I yeah. Know this. Is no. it new? Like, uh, so. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, what what is what I will address in the just next slide is uh, if you if you get rid of the monotonicity, right? So monotonicity seems to be uh, that from combinatorial point of view, monotonicity is not such a better assumption. So being closed on some graphs, but from uh, if you speak about theories, then it is uh, in the model theory, it's much less. Uh, they speak about embeddings. And uh, and there are results about uh, about it, but the full classification is not. And in fact, this is uh, this is subject what I want to uh, say now. I mean, this motivation of this model theory came that instead of speaking subgraphs, we started to speak about definability, you know, and the, and the interpretations and transactions, uh, some restricted uh, form of it. I mean. And uh, and that works everything very well. I mean, it's a very really inspiring uh, thing. And so, so for example, uh, uh, so these are the Shellach uh, Baldwin reformulation of the result that is something is stable if if you cannot interpret linear order. So here it is with this letter. Uh, something is dependent if there is not a bipartite graph. I mean. Which has, uh, if there is a bipartite which has no interpretation, which uh, in effect is uh, dealing with VC dimension. I mean, there's a really uh, very different view on these things. And, uh, and we know that it's for morality classes. I mean, these things are the same, but if you do it for, or for uh, if you do it for, for hereditary, then it is leading to some little, uh, li little, uh, little problem. And there is a very nice conjecture. I mean, which uh, which we speak about the structurally sparse graphs. If, so these are classes which are interpretations of the sparse classes of graphs. And something is uh, for a hereditary class of class, the, the conjecture made by several people, uh, several groups of people, is that uh, stability, it, it should be structurally no dense, dense the property. So something is a stable if and only if you see it's a transduction of a lower dense class. And uh, there is a nice paper on, on this, which is uh, contained our other, yeah, yeah. So, and I have some, uh, some concrete example, which I will not, not, uh, not deal with. And I will say in a, in a, I will not say right. Let me see. We start a uh, couple of minutes later. So. Okay, so I just uh, very very briefly say uh, say the. I mean, this, this is another uh, attractive uh, uh, development about which there exists very nice book by Lovas. Lovas wrote a book about the limits in the colloquium publication of AMS a few years ago, and it is dealing with uh, with. Uh, uh, this uh, processes, I mean, basically motivated by statistics or probability uh, of the of the sequences of graphs, which somehow uh, share some properties of convergence, and uh, and speaking about the limits, and we somehow approach it for the sparse graphs in a slightly more model theoretic way, and. Uh, and uh, and this, in fact, uh, is uh, and I will say really just a few slides 
uh, the basic definition, I will not say, uh, and then I will say verbally the main result. So uh, Lova story is uh, based on the number of homomorphisms. I mean, uh, it's based on the, that if you take a given graph F, you are counting the number of homomorphism into another graph. So like a F test, F homomorphic test. And you are counting how many are there and you take a density of it. So you take probability that a random mapping from a given graph F is a homomorphism into it. And uh, this is generalizing it to the formulas. I mean, mm -hmm. the formula and uh, you take uh, phi A the formula first of the formula and you which has some say, a free, uh, in this case, P, P free variables. These are, and you count. I mean, what are the what are the P tuples? How many P tuples are in the graph? So that if you replace this uh, this free formulas by the vertices, uh, the formula will be satisfied. So this is this solution of time solution set phi a of the formula phi in, in the formula in the structure a and then the, if you scale it by number of vertices you get a probability of the, the that uh, random assignment is uh, it, it can be extent to validity of the of the of the of the formula we call it stone bracket i mean then we say structural convergence that that the sequences of structures forget for single graphs Sequence of graphs is uh, is uh, converging. If for any formula phi, any first order formula phi, these numbers, which are between zero and one, are converging for every for every this formula. So whatever you de define in the first formula, it's really, it has a it has a satisfaction limit in this, uh, and it may be set of formula. This has a nice properties. And for example, if X is set of formula, if you take only quantifier free formulas, then, then actually it is the same as the counting of homomorphism, as you may, as you may, you may show. It needs some little work, but it, 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 it is done. If you take uh, sentences, formulas, all for sentences, formulas which have no free variables, then you get so-called, uh, uh, so X convergent, and then you get, uh, Elementary convergence. I mean, so that uh, so from certain point on, the formula is not satisfied, or set, or from certain point on, the formula always is satisfied in a in your formula. And uh, so here is about uh, about this homomorphism. I mean, and it's uh, some it leading to some theorems. I mean, which is uh, about the I mean, this algebra. What uh, what how it is dependent and how it is. Uh, consistence with these other definitions with Benjamin Ishram and with, uh, with the left uh, limit convergence of, of Lovas. And the question is what are the limit, whether they are limit converge, uh, somehow uh, structures. I mean, um, if, so, I mean, it's converging. I mean, okay, you would like to isolate something infinite, maybe, or finite, but something which would represent the limit. But this in the densis uh, is. Uh, is uh, is uh, it's called graphon. It's called uh, graphing. And can you do it in in this in this sense? I mean, forget about this. I mean, these are another aspects, a probabilistic aspect of the of the of the same thing. I mean, uh, some ultimate goal is to define something which would uh, be represented, as, and that it can be done. It's it's called it's called modeling. I mean, and and uh, I, I'm not saying it will be last slide. But uh, so it's a modeling is a standard model space, uh, which uh, which has the property that all the first order definable sets, but for the k tuples as well. So it's a product uh, of of tuples are are Borel in the product uh, in the product of this uh, of this uh, Borel space, and uh, this is. This is generalizing some Borel graphs and uh, totally Borel structure. It's close to totally Borel structures of uh, Harvey, uh, Harvey, Harvey, Harvey Friedman. So, and this should be this should be the model. Now, surprise, to surprise, and uh, just uh, questions. Remember, 
how I was speaking about the subdivision points and complete graphs. It's exactly the same thing as uh, as as this thing. And I sort of uh, found it uh, surprising. I mean, this uh, that is high level language is suddenly uh, leading to the to the to the same. Uh, same thing. I mean, so that's a more monotone class of graphs. Again, it's monotone. It's a bore. C is nowhere than C phenomenon. If, if you take a converging sequence, this F4 converging sequence, then it uh, then it converges to to uh, to to modelic and some reference and uh, open problems is that you can have a better understanding of it. And better understanding of it is the uh, understanding. It's uh, it looks exotic, but in the in the area it's a natural condition, a mass transport. Uh, whether the mass transport condition holds, I mean, it's a like property of the valuation of the of the for uh, which holds in finite. So generalization of this trivial finite uh, condition on bipartite graphs <coughs> for mass transport, and it's an inverse theorem right? for the. Lovas proved uh, uh, for this uh, graphon inverse theorem that if you take any graphon, that there exists, there exists convergent sequence. That is a, uh, in sparse word, very complicated question. It's uh, 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 it's uh, related to a group theoretic question and Sophie groups and see. But I mean, at least for some special cases, we would like to have. And in fact, in one of these papers, which I've stated before, uh, there is a st this inverse theorem for graphs which have a bounded three depths, I mean, so at least. And uh, here are some references, and thank you for your attention. Somehow too fast at the end. I have a question for the bankers. Let's thank you again. Thank you very much.